I'm waiting for my doctor to call, ready to have this call over with. I'm literally shaking, like I'm nerf. Uh, 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 hate the way I'm feeling right now. It's hard because when you get talking to a doctor, it's like there's this power dynamic that kicks in even if you're a really good advocate for yourself. There's also the processing thing, right? Of like processing. What is the doctor saying? What does that mean? It's gonna be fine. It's just a conversation. But even when it's just a conversation, it feels heavy. <gasps> See? Holy crap, like I'm so jumpy. <sighs> I really like to do something to distract myself, but I feel like if I do that, then my brain gets out of this mode and I forget what I'm gonna say. I've had some time to process a little bit of the conversation I had with the doctor. What I learned on the phone call was surprising to me. And maybe for those of you who have many ears or know somebody who has many ears, I hope that this will give you hope as well. Granted, I have only Meniere's in one ear. This is a very different situation when you have Meniere's in both ears. Here we go. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm not doing well at all. I'm miserable. Um, I started about a week ago, I started getting severe vertigo attacks that I associate with many ears because I have the fluctuating hearing loss. I have the ear fullness, the ear pain, I'm being pulled to the right. I uh, feel like I'm going to fall off the edge of the earth. It's just so frustrating, <laughs> as I'm sure you can understand. It just really, every time I get these, it, it just severely impacts my quality of life. And I think I'm also frustrated because, you know, I just had that gent in September. And that was my eighth gentamicin. It's feeling like, I mean, you know, personally, it's just hard to go through doing treatment like this. He asked me, can you describe the, the quality of your vertigo? And he's asked me this before and I just haven't really thought about it because it all feels really horrible to me. So to me, vertigo is vertigo is vertigo. Is it a spinning or is it a floating sensation, a pulling sensation. It's more of a pulling, it's more of a ladder. Um, right. Sometimes there'll be like rare occasions where I'll feel that pulling, the spinning, but it's more of like a pulling, like I'm being pulled off the edge of the earth type of thing. I feel like I'm perpetually falling off the edge of the earth. That may not sound like typical vertigo, but it feels as bad as what I experienced when I had vo rotational vertigo. Right, so the reason you feel that is that there aren't very many cells left okay. in the ear. There aren't very much left in there. Okay. Genomycin's done uh, most of everything it can do. It's knocked down most of the cells, but the ones that are left are mostly in the gravity receptor. Okay. Okay. They're very, very difficult to knock out. Oh. And you know, all the genomycin in the world might not knock them out once and for all, but they will collapse and sort of knock themselves out. It's just a matter of, can you get through it all? Okay. So doing more gen, I don't know that that's the right thing to do because there are only a few cells left. The fact that I feel this pulling sensation is really good news for him because when we're using gentamicin as a treatment, remember gentamicin is toxic to the inner ear and the goal is to chemically kill off the nerve cells in the inner ear because the nerve cells are communicating this vertigo to the brain and we don't want that so we're trying to stop that communication the good majority of the hair cells the nerve cells in my inner ear are killed with the exception of the utricle they're the last ones to die they're the ones that are associated with gravity so why i feel like i'm falling off the edge of the earth why i feel like i'm being pulled is because the nerve cells that are left are those nerve cells. So I usually tell people, well, if we can figure a way to get it under some control to wait it out rather than to do more treatment. Okay. How long does it take for those cells to die, of it, like finally? You mean ultimately? Yeah. Totally where you don't need Dr. at all? He said, how long do you, until you don't need me anymore? Yeah. Well, probably maybe in a year or two where there, you have nothing, nothing no, no symptomatology at all. 
I mean, I've been dealing with this since 2010. So my Meniere's is close to being over. But you're in a bad period where the, the last few cells are trying to do something and we're trying for them not to do something. <laughs> right, yes. To know that I'm at the end is really hopeful. It's still really hard because I'm going through the symptoms and it's still debilitating me and affecting my life. But he said that he didn't believe that my symptoms would be any worse than they are now. He believes that over time they're going to continue to improve. What medicine do you think covers them up the best? Now let's just look at what you're taking. They use benzodiazepines to help control vertigo and I have been um, prescribed diazepam for vertigo and he said that diazepam is really good for rotational vertigo but it's not good for for the pulling in sensation and the falling sensation that I'm having. There is alprazolam, which is also known as Xanax, and lorazepam, which I think is Ativan. And those two are better for this pulling sensation. The Valium is good for the spinning. It's not so great for pulling and floating. I'm going to try lorazepam and see if that can't help my symptoms. And I'm really excited about it. I'm cheery, sorry. I'm really hopeful. He gave me hope. I'm believing and hoping it's gonna work. I still asked him about the surgeries, the vestibular nerve resection, as well as I have already had the endolymphatic sac decompression and why would that not be the way to go? If you're this severe, why not do that? And I, I know there's really significant risks with the vestibular nerve resection, but I guess I want to put that to you. Because it is going to go away. Okay. It is going to burn itself out and go away. Okay. And it just, and in my view, you're going to be a lot better off. You could ultimately have an implant with what the way we're doing it. You have a cochlear implant if you ever needed it for hearing. Okay. You will not have a long rehab period. That is the real, real danger of doing vestibulonorectomy on a micro patient is really making that whole situation a lot worse. He said regarding the vestibular nerve resection, which is the brain surgery. People who have watched my channel, they've commented that they've had that surgery and have done well, but I have a very sensitive brain. I have, you know, severe intractable chronic migraine, as you all know, and he said that there's a very high likelihood that getting the surgery could make my migraines worse. In addition to all of the very high risk nature of doing brain surgery, that's invasive, and if I had some sort of horrible consequence with my brain, when you consider that, I might <laughs> be over with this in a year or two. It just doesn't balance out. He really believes that I'm at the end. I just want it over. <laughs> yeah, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> it is going to be over. It really is going to be over. Okay. And, and what you're experiencing are signs that it's trying to fail. Give it up. Okay. The last few membranes are trying to fail, and if they would stay out of it, it'll, they'll go ahead and fail. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's what is going on. He said to me, I know that it's really hard. I know that you've been going through this for a very long time, but I need you to just persevere through the last, this period. He said this is probably the hardest period because you're done. You're done with, you're done. I also asked him about the endolymphatic sac decompression, which is something that I had. I didn't have a shunt. I had that early on, and it, it put me into remission for three years. And an endolymphatic sac decompression, again, wouldn't assist in that at all. I like that operation, and I think it has its place, but I think it's uh, what endolymphatic sac surgery tries to do is restart the inner ear, reset it. Okay. Mm. I was trying to pump the membranes back up. You know, I don't think that's what you want. I think you want them to go ahead and collapse so you can kind of be over it. I see. I see. You don't want me to try to turn the clock back. <laughs> no. No. So the endolymphatic sac surgery tries to turn the clock back a few years, get them all working like it did before, and then so you can go through it all again. I don't know. You're you're heading down the road that is going toward the end, I believe. Yeah. And that 
you don't really want to start the game over again. No, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm good with this end thing. <laughs> the surgery revitalizes those hair cells. And he said, our whole goal is to kill the hair cells. So doing the surgery is kind of opposite to our goal. It's going down. This is the process of it going down. And we just don't have the medicine right. It, you'll, okay. I think you'll find that lorazepam works a lot better. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. Even better, it's covered by your insurance. Yes, that's important. And thank you for talking through all this with me. I really appreciate your explanations. Yeah. So hang in there, it's, it's gonna eventually be over. Um, you're going through the bad period. It's going to change. It's not gonna stay what it is now. Okay. Because the membranes are collapsing. That's good to know. It gives me hope. This is unfortunately what you have to kind of go through for it to go ahead and sort of be over going down the last road. You haven't got much left in there, but it will it'll quit. Sounds good. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. I I I'm really glad I asked all of my questions. It's a relief. It was a pretty darn amazing appointment. It was not something I expected here. And it, it, it is hard because it means that I still have to persevere and endure suffering now. Although, you know, maybe changing to the lorazepam is going to help me. But I wanted to share this information with you all because I think for people who have Meniere's, it gives hope and hope that someday it can be over and granted I've had a lot of gentamicin injections so I've had a lot of you know toxins being put in my ear trying to kill this these hair cells and he said they're going to die they're going to collapse it's just a matter of when I got hope today and I did not expect that it feels good there's an end I'm really thankful to have such a knowledgeable doctor I'm so thankful to have access to him if you have any questions please ask me I'm happy to Try to answer them if I can. Keep fighting. I am Kelly. You are not alone. Go find your incredible anyway. Love you guys. Bye. You are not alone in this world. You are not alone. You are not alone in this world. You are not alone.